If there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's this. Select channel one, turn on your EQ, turn on your send to your master, and turn on all of the sends to the monitors. Right click copy, copy all. Right click paste, paste to all. Now you've got some working channels. Midas Pro Mixers are great, but when you get one, nothing is connected up. By the end of this, you'll have a show file ready to go every time you work on one. So what we need to do to start off is we need to create a show. Whether this is a brand new mixer or you're coming into a venue where the mixer is used, you need your personal show file that only you touch. Select automation and filing on the button on the bottom of this mixer. And then up the top left, you'll see it says new. You wanna click new, create a new show, and then call it something like new show. After that, you want to make sure that you're on the automation page and you'll see a scene that says safe. You want to click on that and then click now. It's going to threaten you with losing your job because you're resetting all the mixer settings. That's fine. Anyone who is a decent technician will have saved their show already. So you want to click now, load that scene, and then you want to create a new scene. So we click store and then store to the next available scene. And then, okay. Now we click save up the top left and that's our show ready to go. Let's take a look at patching now. Click on the patching button on the Midas Pro Mixer surface. It's going to open up this patching page. We want to select on the left hand side, IO, and on the right hand side, we want to select inputs. Now on the left hand side, what you'll see now is all the physical inputs, all the connectivity that we have, whether that is the mixer surface or a connected stage box. And on the right, you'll see the input channels on the mixer. So let's hold up for a second and just cover this concept really quickly. On digital mixers, the idea of a mixer channel is separated from the idea of a physical input. On an analog mixer, when you connect to XLR input one, you always go to channel one, fader one. But on a digital mixer, when you connect to input one, XLR one on the back of the mixer or on the stage box, it goes nowhere. It just goes into the mixer, into what I like to call the virtual realm. And then in this virtual realm, we have these mixer channels, these input channels. And these are channels with faders that we can mix on. We can apply EQ, compression, and route them places like monitor wedges or the main front of house PA. Since we're dealing with EQ, I recommend that you check out my three-step guide to perfect EQ. It's a free PDF guide that you can get by clicking on the link in the description down below or heading to offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ. What you see on the left here is our physical realm, our physical microphone inputs. On the right hand side, you see our virtual realm, our mixer input channels. We need to connect those two up. We need to bridge this connection. So we are going to select channel one, XLR one on the surface here. You see it says surface IO, that is the XLR inputs on the back of this physical mixer. Select input one and then click input one on the right hand side of the screen. Now you have created a bridge a digital connection between the microphone input on the back of the mixer and the first input channel on this mixer. Snake input one goes to channel one. We want to route our mixer one to one. We want microphone one to go to input one, microphone two to input two, and so on. It's like this automatic routing function, auto, up the top of the left of the screen here. And then we sort of draw a little lasso, drag a box over all of the inputs on our mixer surface. You could do this on your stage box if you have one connected, but I'll just show you on the mixer surface. Now you see all of them are yellow. That's all of the inputs are selected. And if we go back and we click on input one, one more time, what it's going to do is it's going to spill out all of those inputs into all of the input channels. So now, each XLR input on the back of this mixer, coming from the left-hand side, has been patched into an input channel on the mixer surface. One to one, two to two, 24 to 24. Long story short, now all of our XLR inputs have a fader and they can be mixed. But let's have a little chat about the output routing as well. Because the outputs are very similar to the inputs. They exist in this virtual realm. They are not connected. Although they have a fader, they are not connected to a physical XLR output, either on the mixer itself or on a stage box that you have connected. And we need to make these connections so that we can have master outputs and monitor mixes. So on the left, click buses. And on the right, click I.O. So now this whole physical virtual thing is flipped. On the left hand side, you will see our auxiliary sets. That is the buses within this mixer. Mix buses, monitor buses, auxiliary buses, mixes, whatever you want to call them. Simply channels that you can mix to. Underneath that, you'll see the matrix section. That's pretty much identical to the actual auxiliary sends on the Midas Pro mixer. So not too much to talk about there. And underneath that, you're going to see the master section. 
Now on a Midas Pro 1, like I'm using, this master section is automatically patched to the master out XLRs on the back of this mixer surface. But we might want to patch it to the outputs on our stage box. What we're going to do is we're going to select master output one and two, left and right. And we're going to look over at where it says stage box here, it says DL251, that's our AES stage box. And then we're going to patch these into channels 15 and 16. Now our master bus comes out channel 15 and 16 on our stage box. That's where we can connect our main PA speakers. We're also going to want to set up our monitor mixes. So we're just going to select auxiliary send one to eight. I want eight monitors. And then I'm also going to route them out of outputs one to eight on our stage box. You could also route them out of outputs one to eight on the mixer surface, on the back of the mixer itself. Select them and then we click on the first output and all the outputs spill out after that. We've got inputs routed and we have outputs routed, but we're not done yet because so far all of our mixer channels are useless. This is what I talked about at the start of the video. You need to select mixer channel one. It's going to say mic one right now. And you need to turn on all the functionality that you want to use. Press the home button on the left of the mixer surface just below the screen and make sure that up the top it says console overview. You want to see this channel strip on the right hand side with the sort of preamp overview, auxiliary buses, EQ, all that good stuff. What we want to do now is turn on everything that we need to use in a show. So for me, that's going to be compression, gating, EQ, and also most importantly, we need to send this channel to the master bus because right now it goes nowhere. So we click this master button and now it goes to those master faders that we patched in the last step. Finally, we want to click down here on auxiliary sends one to eight, and we want to make sure that they are all turned on and set to pre-fader because these are what we're going to use for our monitors. We also want to go to auxiliary nine to 16 and turn all of them on because we're going to use them in just a moment. Now that this channel is ready to go, it has EQ compression and is routed to a master bus, we're going to copy it to all of the other input channels. So we're going to go up to the top right here of this channel strip section, and we're going to right click on copy. I'm going to click on copy all. We're going to right click on paste after that, and we're going to right click on paste to all. Now the mixer is going to complain. It's going to say, don't do this. You're going to lose your job. You're going to raise all of the settings on the mixer. This is our show file. We're the boss. So we're going to say, okay, do it. Ruin my job. Now, all of our input channels are all ready to go. If we grab that EQ, it will work. If we turn our compression dial, we'll get compression. If we turn our gate, we'll hear gating. We don't need to fiddle about with turning on. And if you want to disengage it, you can always turn it off. A couple more steps that we need to take here. That is our auxiliary sends. Sends themselves need to be turned on and configured. So we route to our output section, and then we select our first aux send, aux send one. We're just gonna turn that fader up to full. We turn the EQ on, in case we need that. And then we right click copy, copy all, right click paste, paste to all. And now all of our auxiliary sends are turned up and ready to go. So when we turn our send dial up on an individual channel, it actually goes somewhere. Last step that we need to do is we need to configure our auxiliary returns. These are what we're going to use for our effects. That's right, we've still got to sort our effects out. Go to your auxiliary returns, they're in the input section. Select the first one, turn it up. Make sure it's unmuted. Make sure that your EQ is on if you want to use that. And most importantly, make sure that it is routed to your master fader. Same routine, copy all, paste all, and that's it. Your mixer is ready to go. At this point, you could run a show. You would probably get through it without losing your job. You might not be able to run a great concert though, and that's why we need to set up our effects. If this is helpful so far, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and leave me a comment and let me know if there's anything else that you want to know about Midas Pro Series mixers. Press the effects button on the control section of the console, just in between the faders. On the first space in the effects rack, click that, and then click change device up the top left. I'm gonna set up a plate reverb. So I'll just select reverbs, plate, reverb. The reverbs here, it looks pretty, but there's no sound going in and there's no sound going out. You might think that this is now patched to auxiliary send one. It's not. So back to the routing screen we go. This time we want to have our buses on the left hand side and our effects on the right hand side. This is all happening inside the mixer now. There are no physical outputs or inputs being configured. This is all digital. We need to tell auxiliary bus one to send the information on that bus to the effects unit. We want to click on auxiliary bus 13, that's what I'm going to use, and we want to send it to effects slot one. So on the right hand side, on the effects, we're going to click on input one on effects slot one. 
when we send information, audio, to bus 13, it's going to reach our effects unit, but it's still not coming back yet. We need to get that effect sound out in the PA. That's what our auxiliary returns are for. So now we change up the routing screen once more. On the patching window, we're going to go on the left hand side to effects, and we're going to go on the right hand side to inputs. And down the bottom, you'll see there are the inputs for our auxiliary returns. We're going to select output one and two, that's channel one and two from our first effects unit, our plate reverb, and we're gonna click on auxiliary return one and two and patch them together. Now, if we grab channel one and turn up bus 13, that sound will go into effects bus one, the plate reverb, and it will come out of effects bus one and be returned on auxiliary return one and two. That's now our plate reverb return. And it's already turned up and routed to the master, ready to go. Let's grab another effects slot, change the face, and then set up just a mono delay. And make sure that you click global tap tempo up the top. This allows you to use the tap button on the surface of the mixer to configure the tempo of the delay. And now you're ready to go. Check out around here for some other useful videos that YouTube's going to recommend to you. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.